Hello, everybody. It's Monday. It's Monday. Yeah. Yo, yeah. It's MFA Monday. Who's got a case of the uh, uh, Garfield December 13th? <gasps> it's Monday the 13th. Finally. That's not a thing. Okay. <laughs> Monday, no. Yeah, whoa, 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 oh, whoa. Are, you, are you sure, Bryce? I, Is I, it? I don't know. I'm, yeah. Yeah, uh, that, that was an iconic plot point in the, uh, uh, the Garfield series. That yeah. was the worst day. I don't know. Uh, uh, if you're watching us live, you uh, we may drop for just a minute. We, we will be right back. I like that for Garfield, a cat that just sits around and does nothing Monday has any particular <laughs> significance to him. Rain, and meanwhile, this layabout. Mm -hmm. Did we talk about the story about why the guy that played Bill Murray in the Ghostbusters cartoon was fired and they hired another voice actor? Uh, Lorenzo Music? Why, why was he fired? The original guy who did the first before the in the pilot are like the test run of uh that uh the, he goes, I, I, no, and I, I assume we're talking about the animated the real ghostbusters not the original property yeah, yeah. no i i do not know yeah he goes i don't like this guy's voice he sounds too much like garfield <laughs> and so they hired Garfield. <laughs> no, no, they hired well, somebody they hired else. The guy, oh, the, oh, oh, so the people, else, that was the reason he later, got fired. Yes. is for sounding too much like Garfield. That's so funny. And then years yeah, later, Bill Murray is Garfield. I don't like him. Sounds too much like Garfield. And then later on, Bill Murray, of course, would become the famous voice of Garfield. 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 <laughs> and Garfield Two: A Tale of Two Kitties. It was the lasagna of times. It was the normal of times. Well, like the lasagna. I, I don't know with so much about Bill Murray. You don't know what's apocryphal and what's not. But like uh, the the rumor that I had heard is because Bill Murray doesn't have an agent. He has a, a, a like a FedEx in New York that you print your scripts out, and every once in a while he picks them up and reads them. And he was under the impression that the Garfield script, because it was either written or was set to be directed by somebody with oh. the last name Cohen that he thought it was one of the Cohen brothers that was doing a Garfield movie and was into it and agreed to do it before then realizing oh, oh no, it's a different not. Cohen it's oh. just straight up yeah, Garfield there's, there's there's a writer named Eton Cohen yes and it looks like Ethan without an H and, oh Ethan and apparently also yeah. the other thing about Bill Murray is that when he agrees to do your movie you then don't hear anything else from him and you just hope that he shows up when he's <laughs> when... scheduled to show up. And so I guess he just showed up to the recording booth that was like, man, these, I mean, I guess he's going to do some crazy stuff in post. But <laughs> this is Garfield. This is, huh? this is, this is pretty Get a little Garfield bit of Garfield thing. vibe yeah. from this. Is this a, all right. Hello, everybody. We'll start in just a minute. Everybody Bryce have a good weekend. Bryce is in his bag. I'm in my bag. That's my bag, baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't get me started on the race. Oh yeah, Don't you know, end of F one, huh? Uh, yeah, they're not doing any more. They're a, done. Was this the was that the end of the season? Uh, no, that was yeah, that was the, the end, end of the season. season. Yeah. And uh, don't get me started on it. I I won't trust yeah, me. No, I swear, <laughs> I swear. Don't, don't even ask me I'm many questions don't about it. Trust me, there will be no questions asked What's, about F <laughs> one. <laughs> What was the second in command's name in in Hook? That great scene where uh, Captain Hook is like, Smee? Uh, yeah, 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 don't even try to stop me, Smee. Don't try to stop me. Yeah. I'm going okay, okay. Uh, do, 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 stop me, Smee. Yeah. Don't, stop me, stop Just, me, Smee. Yeah. <laughs> don't let me do it. Don't let me talk about it for three hours. <laughs> Damn officials. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. We'll do the Weird Things podcast here in just a minute. Um. The fuck says we'll need to clear out the whole pre-show tomorrow for critical racing theory. <laughs> yeah, if, if if we have to <laughs> land the uh, space station a little bit earlier, let me know. We might have to because last last week uh, we, in lieu of actually talking about the race last week, we only talked about how all of the racers have incredible redwood necks because they've got to deal with all the mm. G forces. Oh wow! Um, but we, I think we, this is a race we'll want to talk about. Necks of F one. There's an Instagram. That's a calendar. Next. Oh, no. oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Andrew, you ready to uh, do a weird thing? Yeah, guys. I've been like here forever. 
All right. Uh, then I will count you in. In. Three. Hold on. Hold oh. on. I got a thing in my mouth. Okay. Oh. Uh, the answer was no. All right. One sec. All right. There we go. I'm a professional, guys. Okay. This exactly. is what it looks like. Yeah. I did watch the Succession Kin's birthday party last night. Oh, it's so good. Oh, yeah. Honesty. <laughs> is such a lonely <laughs> word. <laughs> what about Tiny Wu Tang? Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. Ready? ready? All right. Yep. I'm going to catch you in. in. Three, two, Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Ahoy, ahoy. And Bryce Kistio. Hello. Gentlemen, I don't know if you saw the news today. Time Magazine announced their person of the year. Ah, well, it, it's been a long time coming and uh, very controversial, but... Uh, I, for one, support the fact that Bryce Castillo was the <laughs> person of the year. I know there's a lot of hate online. Oh, but man. Finally. His hot takes about F1. <laughs> yeah. The officials. No. <laughs> <laughs> I very graciously right. accept. Uh, uh, so, yeah, Elon Musk, the person of the year. And I'm actually, I don't know. Uh, oh, I, I just now found out. I was this moment's old when I found out what the answer to the yeah, question was. So it's, no, so it's oh, Elon, tell. It's Elon do, Musk. But. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm I'm glad that they actually made it a person and didn't do one of their ding dong cheapy pee pee <laughs> the, like the like, fighting spirit of science that takes on COVID to this day exactly. is the person of the year. The rest, the 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 uh, the the nurses. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the teachers. Great, but... well, yeah, that was like historically, person of the year didn't have to be good. Or, yes, you know, it could be somebody who made the biggest like Hitler was person of the year yeah. and whatnot. But then it became this sort of iconic sort of thing. And then uh, it was a person who kind of made the biggest sort of news of the year. And I remember the 2016 election, like, well, if you're going to follow, like, who's the most controversial person of the year? We know who that was. But yeah, it that. used to be kind of like headlines in tonnage. Right. If you were it, like, if you were going to say, add up all the times that that anybody was mentioned, who was mentioned the most, who was the person of the year? Well, I, I believe it was the most impactful. Was was the criteria? Sure. That the the one that mattered most. Um, yeah. Uh, which again, not to, not to. Which in my book would be Jesus every year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not not to to play to the stereotype, but but I uh, kind of dialed out on person of the year when uh 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 in 2001 they they intent i mean for very good political reasons but but hey who do you think was the single human who had the biggest impact in on 2001, 2001? Mm. uh mm. guess what he was not oh. named the, person of the year the numa Ooh. numa guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh no it was one yeah that's i think when they decided uh we don't we don't want to lose any subscribers over this. Yeah. Good old Rudy Gi Giuliani, uh, who would go on to give a speech in front of a storage shed. <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> wait, wait, can, we, can we go back? Can we go back there? So, so there we go. So 2001, obviously. All right. So it's like you make the decision then not to give Bin Laden it. Right. Uh, and instead you give Giuliani. So it's like, all right, that's like the, the closest one that's not going to get us hate mail. Uh, they then get further cowardly in 2002. With the whistleblowers. And yeah. Ron whistleblowers. Oh, uh, God. Followed then, by the American soldier, too. Yeah. By, by the way, if you're going to play the Enron game, then the answer is the staff of Enron. <laughs> Congrats. You made the news by committing fraud. So, yeah, no, it was uh, it was the whistleblowers. It was WorldCom. It was Enron. There was all these financial things. So the American soldier, then George W. Bush, which... Uh, to me, if it's going to be the president, it's such a cop out. It's like, because the president is so outsized and so important that, like, unless the president gets assassinated I, or. I, I will say that in 2000, I think that's a, a merited one because there was that insane, bonkers uh, uh, runoff count. But and, even and then, right. like, what did he, 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 he ran correct, and then correct. crazy in, things happened. Okay. Uh, that was without a doubt the event of the year was it was was the the recount. So uh, are you gonna pick the winner or the loser? 
or do you give it to the courageous ballot lookers? <laughs> well, at least they did something. <laughs> they did something. All right, so I'm, I'm not going to yeah, fight on that choice. one. I'm not going to here because I want to get to the ultimate fraud in, in, in this person of the year thing. So then they do the good Samaritans. Jesus. Uh, and then this is really where it, 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 it just, it never recovered you? for me. You. You oh, are the right. person of the year because oh, yeah. YouTube well, was a big they, deal. They just had a mirror on the cover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so dumb. But yeah. I will so say dumb. that uh, it has only gotten uh, been been more of an appropriate pick since 2006. No. Like, individual it content like, scroll creators. Scroll down a little bit more on there. Uh, sure. Uh, okay. So I noticed they put the elected president who got elected every year. <laughs> until yeah a uh, uh, oh really again oh yeah no so so bush in 2000 oh and then barack obama, barack obama again in 08, in 08, 08 12. Barack oh, obama, okay so obama we're obama four twice. for four and then uh oh, oh, oh wait, no. there we go. 2016 it was Trump. yeah um and in 2020 it was, was joe bush? biden yeah yeah yeah, yeah. trump in 2016 yeah well shoot now we got now we got to eat oh. eat some crow I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. wait who was last year uh, it was uh joe biden and kamala harris Okay, they had to share the cover. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Saucy takes. Uh, all right, so uh, uh, Elon. I, I mean, the only thing that I would say about Elon getting it is that I, I think that there were probably years that he could have he could have gotten it before now. I mean, I, I think like at this point he has kind of become. And maybe maybe it's the idea that like he's not going to go away. Uh, well. He, uh, certainly he had, okay, so once SpaceX was able to demonstrate, I mean, you know, I'll never forget that triple stage rocket, seeing those yeah. two things land, like that to me was a moon landing moment or whatever, but. That would be 2020. But, de- uh, or no, 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 earlier. Oh, no, 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 no. sorry, sorry, no, 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 before, yeah. That was, uh, 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 yeah, sorry, the year before, and then uh, uh, 2020 was when they officially sent people. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, but 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 this was the year that I mean, at this point, you know, uh, Tesla stock uh, continued to explode. Uh, uh, it, be, it, it became a very polarizing figure. Uh, hosted Saturday Night Live. Uh, and, yeah. I you, guess, you know, it's yeah. like this was he, he, for many he, other reasons. He became he became the richest man in the world this year. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's that. So. Is that impactful or is that just uh, a uh, victory again, lap? Is it you're the richest man in the world? I guess, I guess, that, but that's, but that's, I do feel like this is a not a lifetime achievement award, but this is this is a, an, an an accumulation uh, award for him because he has he has achieved a lot of stuff. I think that there were mile markers along the way that you could call him the the person of the year, but this is it, not election year, right? So let's understand that one every four years, based on what we've seen it's going to be the person who's elected president and sometimes their VP. Uh, and then beyond that, you have to pick, you know, in the zeitgeist. It's hard to say that Elon Musk is not in the zeitgeist though. Yeah, he is. You yeah. know, he, he did Saturday Night Live. And- Do you think he got that haircut just for the cover? Because the, the haircut seemed to be a new thing and, 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 and this was all done, shot, and... Uh, videoed after I, the haircut. I, uh, uh, true theory here. Uh, I think he got Disney Plus and started watching Hawkeye and saw the flashback to the haircut that Ronan was sporting. Ironically, not in Hawkeye, but in the Avengers movie when he was yeah. being Ronan yeah. and was like, yeah, I want to rock that. Uh, 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 and was reminded and then and then did that. Seems legit. Where, where are we at on the, this haircut, Andrew? Uh, I mean, in the photos, there's some really good photos of that there. It's one yeah, of the it looks good. That... I I actually yeah. think this is the cover is one of the less flattering photos because the the way it is feathered in the back, it looks like the uh, the Donald Trump swoop back. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it looks eccentric, right? Which I think that's that's part of his brand. It is now represented visually. Mm. Like no one would look at that it if looks you good had there. If you had no idea who Elon Musk is, you would not look at him and be like, oh, that's just a dude. Yeah. Like, that guy's got something going on. Uh, Bryce, if, if you're able to call up uh, 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 Ronan <laughs> Hawkeye, because oh, I, I, I am certain, like, it's the same gut. It's, it's, it's shocking to me. But uh, uh, I'm down for it. I, I want more people to have uh, 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 crazy hair. Look, uh, <laughs> take it from me. Having crazy hair is cool. 
No, that's not the same. Because he has it shaved all the way up to the line. Uh, yes, he does have it higher up. This is slightly more like a like a looser, high and tight. Uh, 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 all right, welcome to hairstyle. <laughs> all right, so Andrew, uh, 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 so it's because he he is now the the richest man in the world, and and his pursuits that were once looked at as frivolous or dangerous have now proven to be lucrative. I mean, yeah, you think about it, and I I am I am not gonna you know say that he does not handle Twitter like a crazy person, uh, but I can look out my window and I'll see a Tesla. Yeah, there'll be Teslas, right? And and this was a company four years ago, five years ago. We were we had people tell us they're doomed, they're doomed, they're doomed. Three years ago, oh no, they're not going to make it, they're not going to make it. Guess what? Newsflash: the cars work. They're on the road. They're everywhere. Overhead, the number of astronauts that have been put into space on board spacecraft that Elon Musk built it's phenomenal. It is it is it is insane. And so, and then hitting the the mark of a guy that technically shouldn't exist like technically shouldn't be able to run two companies like this and succeed in that way but he did and yeah. technically you shouldn't be bleeding that far ahead and that's a thing that the conventional wisdom said and there's a lot of things he did that people said you could not do or that's not the way to do manufacturing or whatever and so um and then hitting the number one the the and he if he wanted to create extra income extra whatever he could spin off starlink right now and whatever shares he'd have in that that put him further ahead he could create you know a couple of bs kind of companies that would totally literally there was a quote from there from his twitter that, yeah that, they, they, this, this is the, yeah. the the youtube video of the person of the year highlighting not only tesla and spacex but also his twitter for which they they make sure they put the spotlight on at elon musk i put the art in fart i mean first and, of all that's patently the untrue uh the person who puts the art in fart is mr methane the uh the only fart impressionist yeah yeah uh uh yeah i mean look, I, I i i do think that Brian made it made a good point that the SNL thing I think does like elevate things to another level of like all right how many CEOs that don't have a television show like uh, have Steve been Forbes on, is the only one I could think of have been on SNL Steve oh, Forbes uh, Steve Forbes hosted SNL uh Ron Reagan Jr hosted uh uh SNL but he was a media personality right uh, no 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 this or is back this when was... he was just the son of the president okay. <laughs> like I don't know how that happened um Nancy Kerrigan well, hosted Saturday Night Live. I mean, she was, yeah, she's an athlete, athlete's host. Uh, yeah, she was also, I, I remember some article saying, like, uh, uh, like I, I forget which cast member said it, but somebody said, like, yeah, normally, you know, we get people in and we try to write the sketches so that it's really easy for them, but, but we're always surprised by the energy that they're able to bring to it. And, you know, sometimes people are more deadpan, sometimes they're, 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 they're more energetic. It was. It took a lot for us to work around Nancy Kerrigan. <laughs> yeah, she famously kind of a kind of a, a salty person. Moving on. Uh, Wait, uh, no, no, a, a bland cracker. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Didn't she, she? There was a hot mic. I'm trying to just steer us away from Nancy Kerrigan, but like, oh, really? like but wasn't wasn't there a a hot mic situation where she was at Disney and Disney Parade? Yeah. Oh, uh, where she I, was like, uh, 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 she. Look, she's a world class athlete. She's used to getting up, eating a certain diet, and and practicing a million you know hours a day. She's not humans. Didn't seem to be her strong suit. I see. Got it. Anyway, uh, I can't. I can't even. I can't even imagine like what it's like to be a. I think of the stupid things I say per day, and the opportunity if I were in front of microphones and stuff, and like. Well, especially when it's like it's not your thing. You're kind of thrust into this. There's a lot of people that want, you know, a, a, a grab of you. She wanted the gold medal, and I'm sure was happy to get paid for what were little, you know, uh, 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 things, but also probably didn't love doing them. Uh, anyway, yeah. Nancy Kerrigan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I do think that 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 idea of him hosting SNL is is culturally important like it does show an element of uh, uh cultural saturation and i guess that's the other thing is like you have to factor into this person of the year thing is like it used to be an element of either a for our subscribers let's not upset them b if you're walking down the street and you see 
this issue, which, I mean, in the world of magazines, how many event issues are there that still exist today? It's like the person of the year on time, mm-hmm. uh, the swimsuit issue for Sports Illustrated. Yeah, yeah, maybe. And is there another one that anybody can name, an event magazine issue that happens yearly? Like like maybe maybe in a bygone era, the Entertainment Weekly like summer movie preview or something like that, or or the fall TV preview. I mean, uh, uh, I mean now if I'm really stretching and getting niche, niche, uh, it's a uh, like the E3 spectacular of PC Gamer or whatever. Sure. You yeah, know? Mm-hmm. yeah, and I'm sure like there's like a Vanity Fair issue or something that's like culturally above my head. You know, yeah. I'm sure there's a couple like you know. Uh, but it's like Gentlemen, now they, they're the only ones that that that, that exist. So you got to kind of swing for the fences. I'm going to tell you who my nomination is for Person of the Year. Who? Our supporters. Hey! Oh, that's not a cop out at all. You say Patreon.com/slash Weird Things. If you go there right now, you have the opportunity to support this very program. We keep showing up each and every week for you, friends. In fact, thank a patron. That's what you should do this holiday season. Either become a patron and then receive thanks, or thank a patron that uh, uh, this uh, continues to happen each and every week. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, just thank everyone for being a patron. And when they say uh, a patron of what? You're like the Weird Things podcast. I, huh? I really appreciate it. Yeah. And then they'll say, what's the Weird Thing podcast? And then... Boom, now you have a foot in the door. Then you invite yourself over for coffee, send their name and email address, a physical address. So Bryce. We'll add it to the mm-hmm. database That's and then right. we'll follow them forever. Yeah. yeah. So just simply do all of that. Simply. Uh, simply. Or give Don't us complicate a buck. it. Or just give do us it, a bucket. Do it simply. <laughs> so I, I, sometimes I read articles and like they're cool, but then I read the, the coverage and I'm like, I don't think they read their own copy because <laughs> okay. like, my brain hurts and so i and i can't get past a certain thing and then i'm like i need to find the source material because like what else did they miss but anyhow and again you know read my copy and you'll see i really mess up uh this is a i found this for actually the link came through in my rss feed from the bgr boy genius report the science section a new planet discovered by scientists blank 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 30 light years away they describe it as a hellhole. Anybody want to guess why? Because it's really hot and dense and close to a star. Those yes, are... and oh, okay. Um, it's inhabited by demons. Possibly can't rule it out. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the phrase: oceans of TSA fire agents. One of those is very close. <laughs> <laughs> oceans of flames. Magma. Oceans, oceans of lava. Hey! Yeah. Holy crap. Like that this. does looks look like a little gumball. Terrifying. Yeah. Well, I, so I, I'm not saying much that... controversial here, Andrew. I, I, I mean, if, 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 if that much no, is I'm gonna lava. That, that, I'm going to read you this. The new planet is smaller than Earth, around three quarters of size to be exact. That makes it larger than Mercury, but somewhat smaller than Mars. Hmm. But wait, I I don't have any wait. Is that context true? for that? Yeah, because Mars is bigger no, ma- than ma- Earth. Ma- Mars is smaller than Earth. Smaller than Earth. Yeah. Okay. Um. Be, uh, sorry. Re- read it again. Ma- I'll read this again. It, it is larger than Mercury. The new but- planet is smaller than Earth, around three quarters the size to be exact. That makes it larger than Mercury, but somewhat smaller than Mars. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I, I just am not able to access the size of Mars right now. Is, is Mars like oh, hilariously uh. more or less than three quarters the size of Earth? Mar- Mars is half the size of Earth. Gotcha. Really? Yeah, about half. And you think about the gravity. So like Mars has got like one third Earth gravity. And so this planet, if it's, you'd if it's be, three you'd quarters kind of Earth, then it would be bigger rat. than Mars. Not small. Bigger than Mars. Bigger okay. than Mars. It's a tiny, but you read that like. It's your covering astronomy mm. thing. Yeah. But anyhow. Yeah. I, Planet uh, filled with magma ocean. Uh, I, 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 I mean, that's cool. We just got to make uh, an asbestos boat and we can sail them seas. 
but the uh, but uh, yeah, it's interesting because I didn't know the size of Mars. I, I however, I did have a sense of the gravity, uh, the gravity of the question. Uh, uh, yeah, just uh, but but um, I I didn't know the the relative diameter versus uh, uh, it, 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 something something uh, linear versus geometric progressions uh, uh, about how uh, I just assumed that Mars was maybe only slightly smaller than Earth. It's really half. yeah the uh, yeah this this they quoted they were quoting inverse which had the same statistic it's you know about the size which is so whatever uh, um, uh, how how big is the moon I thought the moon was one third the size of Earth is mm, it it's about one tenth really and and yeah, yet when you one, talk about, like, one, volume? one tenth the volume of Earth and yet it's able to manufacture one sixth the gravity. Uh, Google says uh, the moon is more than one. Twenty-seven percent the size of the Earth. Sorry. Uh, right. Okay, so about about a third. <laughs> one might one might phrase yes, it. <laughs> okay, and then uh, again, uh, again. <laughs> There's a lava planet. Why are we ignoring the lava planet? Lava <laughs> planet. Look at this. It's I'm with Bryce, man. <laughs> like are we, we could play. <laughs> Look, I ain't How never gonna go planets. to this lava planet, but I I might live long enough to go to the moon or Mars, and and if I'm incorrect on how big they are, I want to know. And you want to win the trivia contest on no, the way there? No, I, I want to understand things. I want to get. I, I want to be on. The, on I, I want to learn on, on, on the Lido deck. You want to you want to win moon trivia? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh yeah. How many times do I have to say no? Cool. <laughs> Now, um, I imagine it would be hard for life to exist in a lava planet. I mean, life as we know it. Yeah, exactly. Soft little flesh balls like we are yeah. probably don't stand a chance. But I'm sure the badasses that are just lamping on that on that planet are having a ball. Mm -hmm. uh, rock I, men and rock women, uh, <laughs> non-binary rock creatures, just <laughs> chilling. I mean, first of all, they'd have to be some kind of rock fish. Like, uh, uh, because, because they're an ocean, it's, 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 this is water world. They're all like, yep, this place used to be a lot cooler and there were mountains and rock like, people. Like used a rock, to, a rock merman. Uh, yeah. Well, and then, and then rock global warming happened mm. and it got rock out of control. Mm. And now they have to ride rock asbestos, get jet skis around yeah. to fight over rock oil against rock Dennis Hopper. Exactly. Rock Kevin Costner is really going through it, <laughs> but he has he has he has rock gills so that he can breathe in the rock lava. Exactly. Rock lava. That's what that song is about. That's that's what that song is about. I hey man, I, look, got, I think you, I got you, I think I got rock ding lava. Me on the high end of the low end. You don't get both. <laughs> I, I think I got rock lava at a Greek restaurant last week. <laughs> if you uh, pull up, do a uh, do a Google search for the moon's mass, and it's why geometry and all these things are complicated. And when you're trying to look at anything in space, um, are you, you got to do the moon's mass. And you'll get all the parameters. The moon's mass. <laughs> so this is, we're going to look up the moon's mass. Oh, I get a, I get a whole sheet of stuff. Um, there uh, we go. Uh, uh huh. So I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, let me look at that, and I'll calculate what the, uh, you know, the the ratio of the orbital velocity to this. I have no idea. Mm. Science is hard, guys. Yeah. Lava. That's why I like lava. I'm gonna keep eating this rock lava. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was, you thought it was a rock, but it wasn't a rock. Because you look at it was like, too hot. This is like a blows. This what blows my mind. Like you go, hey, because like you're like, yeah, like it looks like about a third the size of the Earth, a quarter the size of the Earth, right? And then you're like, okay, what's the volume compared to us? Like. Oh, it's only got like two percent our volume. Well, and that—that's one of the nutty things is, especially when you get into like gas giants and stuff, where it's like, do you count the atmosphere and the volume? I guess you do, but but you have to. But but meanwhile, um, like when 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 people talk about like, oh, if you were standing on Jupiter, how are you gonna stand on Jupiter? Where you, 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 ain't no ain't no standing in, on Jupiter. And look at the mass, like the mass of the moon is 0 0.07 uh, quintillion, whatever. And the earth is like five point. Like, I don't understand any of this. 
<laughs> How does this work? I guess well, it's well, okay. Just really so this compact. is this is the trick with um, when you get into uh, scientific notation. Uh, you notice it's ten to the twenty-two versus oh, uh, yeah, ten no, to the twenty-four. Part. But it's so it's so easy to miss on the, on that stuff. No, not not that. No, I meant the ratio. No, I got that part. I understand okay. scientific notation. I was talking about like the percentage of the moon's mass compared to the Earth. Yeah, I mean, like uh, divide. So so uh, 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 yeah. Uh, it's like 85 times more massive. The Earth wow. is. Earth than is. the moon. No, the moon. Weird. It's weird. It turned out. No, yeah, more Earth is. Well, and, and yet we've talked about this before that if, uh, uh, that, that, uh, what was the curious statistic about like uh, if we were to terraform Mars or whatever, it could have as much, or I guess Mars has as much land mass as Earth or, or, or even after we terraform it, there, there was some kind of curious ratio where mm -hmm. uh, if, if uh, Mars could essentially truly sustain uh, another Earth's worth of land mass. Yeah, you could, yeah, if you, like with Mars, and if you didn't have as big of oceans, you could have as like much land, like on Earth. Like the amount, the amount of Mars, the surface area of Mars is about equal to the entire land mass on Earth. Yeah. Huh? Damn. Yeah. Welcome to guys going, huh? Ah. Space is weird. Space dog. Lava. Lava, guys. Lava. Lava means lava monsters, right? Everybody with me? Yeah. Well, yeah. And Darth Vader's condo. <laughs> yeah. That's where he makes all his dad jokes. Yeah. I hope where, you don't that's joke where, on your own ambition. That's where he's middle management in a movie that people still lie about being good. Uh, I saw I saw a uh, tweet recently that uh, I, I, I don't want to get into uh, the hierarchy of what's good or not good, but the general point of it was like everyone was talking about Rogue One. But meanwhile, they're like, uh, why does Solo not have more love? Because like the longer I get away from all the current batch of movies, uh, the more I'm just like, man, Solo was the best one. And I, I, I think I wanted, I, I, I've said this, because I wanted you're it wrong, to be silly. Brian. <laughs> which, it's because you're wrong is which, why which one is the best one of, of, of disney star um, wars of disney star wars i'm gonna hate myself for saying this because i did not i, I think it's so flawed it's rogue one um uh, the it, best it, as beginning of what what is yours justin I would tell say me the what last yours jedi. is i walked out liking the last jedi and i can say that it's flawed. oh i can't even watch it it I gets say worse that, every time i try to watch it I, I guess i haven't how many times have you seen it i guess i haven't tried to watch any of them i, I look number one i'm going to say yeah. that i am picking from options none of which i would particularly put high in my rank agreed i can say that i liked the last jedi walking out of the theaters i did not like uh rogue one at all and I, I thought Solo was good in comparison to Rogue One. Uh, uh, but I, I did not. There were a lot of things that I found very, very, very annoying about Solo. So it's like oh, the only one I that I walked out all of like happy was, was The Last Jedi. And that's the only thing that I can say. Yeah, and I, and I hear you. I, 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 nothing to disagree with you. I would say that when I've gone back to try to watch them, one is can I even make it through? Yeah. And the only one I've been able to make it through more than once has been like Rogue One. Everything else, I just can't. Hmm. That's an upset. I, I would have thought, because me and you have complained a lot about Rogue One. <laughs> no, I know. I, I don't, those complaints still stand. Yeah. The other ones are just so much more awful, yeah. in my opinion. Gotcha. It's, it's a matter of, hey, who's your favorite men, uh, member of Hitler's cabinet? <laughs> I mean, well, I, I'm a Goebbels fan, so. Uh, okay, so, yeah. so, so, so uh, uh, that was another aspect of, of the tweet that, that, jumped into my mind was um question and I, I didn't know that there was this dichotomy this split is is the star wars universe about world war ii or is it about space western and i think that defines Why your answer both i mean it's also well, I mean, certain, about certain, feudal certainly, japan certainly, certainly it right? is both right but if 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 it's about uh, uh space world war ii then 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 certainly you got to give the win to rogue one but if it's about space western, then uh, uh, well, but, of but the also movies, I think uh, again, no, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, because to me, I think the Star I mean, Wars movies have gotten the further they've gotten away from the kind of like Seven Samurai stuff that's a little bit more solemn and and treats things a little bit I, less like. I think a, that's a, swing. a mistake. 
I think it's a mistake to say, are they this? Are they good? Are they yeah. good? Like to yeah, me, yeah, solo yes, is yes, not yes, good. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, sorry, to, no, to, but to that, recontextualize, but we're playing a game, not deciding a, a final category. Uh, no, but again, the first the first Star Wars, I mean, I mean, episode four is like a renamed, but right. like original New Hope. That's a very different movie tonally than Empire. Very different. Yeah. Empire is a World War II movie. First yeah. one is a Western call to adventure. Very different. And so if I go, well, this is Star Wars, which one is it? They're both Star Wars. So the idea of saying, is it this or is, well, no, they both are. That's, yes. Is Star uh, Trek about Kirk or Spock? Uh, correct. But you must, in your heart, feel more attracted to your, one your or favorite. the other. Your favorite <laughs> is either, Correct. Like, yeah. like, with, with the understanding that the blending of the two is what makes it special. Exactly. One is something that you that you gravitate more toward. Let, 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 I'm not let, asking let, if let, a Reese's is a peanut butter treat or a chocolate treat. I'm asking you yeah. which part attracts you more. Would you like more peanut butter and less chocolate or more chocolate and less And I guess the butter? one thing I would I mean, say... I like variety. Yeah, I guess the, the one thing I would say to that is that I've never really thought of it in those terms, like right. I've, I've, and neither I've, had I, which is yeah. why I brought it up. Gotcha. Yeah, I and thought I got, that was a really I got interesting sick of Mandalorian. Framework. Mandalorian was fun space westerny for a while, then it got tedious because it was the same thing over and over again. And I'm like, I could use a World War II movie now. Yeah, yeah I could see that. Yeah, I, I think it's, and we haven't heard anything about that, right? Like they're not. We haven't heard that they're like shooting a, a third season. Like that, that whole thing got really weird and really messy really we, fast. We are only hearing about Boba Fett, the man who raced around the galaxy and then decided to become mayor of a small town in New Mexico. <laughs> uh, apparently, Mandalorian season three went into production uh, uh, about October. Oh, okay. So they are yeah. shooting it. Um, because there was that whole, I mean, beyond the whole, uh, 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 Garino thing there was the whole Pedro Pascal whether or not he was going to be back and and yeah because he very uh, because he very much was like yeah when does he take off his mask again and if he doesn't take off his mask why am I not doing all my lines in a sound booth uh, wait no I am doing all he my is, lines yeah. in a sound booth He's never showing but, up but on you're set. making me go on set uh, uh yeah. <laughs> why not get a more athletic person to wear a helmet and I will Take all the, the the acting. Oh, so be, yeah, this is uh, fi filming's underway, but Pedro Pascal is not present. Uh, I mean, I'm fine with that. Uh, look, I don't know. I, I I did think that some of the elements where they were like, you know, having him remove his mask were a little. Uh, it's like the only way we can get out of this room is if you solve the blinking code. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean also it's like if i'm pedro pascal's manager i'm like you get him if he takes off the mask and that's it and uh and it's like they they figured I out don't, one i don't trick. think so i'm like yeah i'm gonna show up today but uh, i'm gonna use a different voice i'll dub it later and if if i answer the name brian you yeah. don't pay any attention to it. Right, right. <laughs> I, uh, from what I understand, like that that was actually a thing. Once um David Prowse found out that uh that all of his voice was gonna be redubbed by uh um uh, James Earl Jones, he he was just like <laughs> like he was he was fairly petulant about, about, the about fact that his he lines. wasn't gonna be the, the, the voice of, of Darth Vader. He's like, what does it even matter what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna dub it later. And then Disney was like, hold on, tell me more about this idea of putting masks on all of your actors and you get to own the likenesses of the masks <laughs> for merchandising for rights forever and ever. But the real money from the movie is made. So I want to talk about an interesting startup, just because I think that's kind of a, I'm like, huh, that's kind of cool. A company called Jupe, which is making, basically they want to mass manufacture housing for a lot of the people on the planet don't have actually access to, you know, rebuild houses, you know, the concepts of shanty towns and things like this. So their idea is the one and a half billion people on the planet without ad adequate shelter. So, uh, so, uh, so is there, um, but before you reveal the truth, my immediate question is, is there a clever or unusual material that it's made out of or not? And then I, and, and if I was going to place a bet, I, I would lean towards not because it's probably similar to 
kind of like uh, when we first discovered uh, Google Cardboard, it's like, uh, like no way you could just take cardboard and some plastic lenses and experience a version of VR, but you could. Unless you went to the USC Mixed Media Lab six months before and saw the thing before Google put their name on it. But yeah, that's just neither here nor there. Yeah. <laughs> even had a little handout sheet that I got. They're like, here's how to make a thing. I'm like, it's cool. I made a thing. And Google's like, we came up with a thing called cardboard. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, I saw this over at their mm-hmm. lab. It was a thing. Uh, so yeah. A thing. It, but, but- uh, what what what? How does Jupe want to want want to do this? Is this plastic or or styrofoam? What's well, I want uh, I hey Bryce, I want you to read that opening line, but just use appropriate censoring. <laughs> uh oh, on uh, on t- TechCrunch, yes. Okay, here we go. Uh, quote from Jeff Wilson: We're not making effing glamping tents for bros at Coachella. Jeff Wilson, co-founder and CEO at Jupe, is eager to <laughs> reassure me as he outlines his vision for the company. Uh, at this point, food is a distribution problem. Clothing is largely solved. There are about 1.5 billion people in the world that don't have adequate shelter. If you're going to work on big problems here on Earth, that's one worth working on. So, okay. Don't be defensive or anything. Well, well, no, no, no. Uh, I mean, it, it, that is a good way to <laughs> grab headlines. But but if if the problem is keeping rain off of your body, it it implies that there is... Bad, there's something bad about. Can I just say tents. this? We're looking at the pictures now. Yeah. It sure looks like a glamping tent for bros <laughs> at you, Burning thank Man. Thank you. I mean, I mean, it's like I don't understand. Uh, well, I mean, uh, the idea is that you would live here, so it should be a nice. I mean, again, here's my thing with that. With that being the opening line, and and who knows where that is in the interview, and whether or not it's part of their marketing material or anything. I don't. I don't know any of those questions, so I don't know how TechCrunch decides to show it. But like. If you could mass manufacture glamping tents that bros would be a, would live in at Burning Man, that would be pretty cool. That would be a tremendous step forward well, for the world's uh, uh, bottom billion. Well, their point is that's the it's not it's the idea is who their audience is. Their sure. audience is the right. rest of the world. Their audience is not yes. Coachella. The yes. audience is you know the people who don't have access to things that we take for granted. Home Depot, yes. you know, Home Depot, money, having money to go to Home Depot, and so they have a very interesting business model too, because part of what they're looking at, and, and maybe it's sinister, I don't know, but the idea is, oh, we will want to build these and we could rent them out or whatever, make them accessible because the number of people in the world who are unhoused or don't have stable housing is tremendous. It's a huge. Yeah. And, and if you're trying to approach this like a technology to say, okay, how can we make, you know, how could we make really good housing very inexpensively to help address those people? Like, I think it's, a, you know, it's a neat idea. It's a very, very, very worthy idea to try and solve. I, I, I think that there is no question about that. Uh, and and I, I think that, that the more they can do it and the more they can drive down the price on whatever this structure is or figure out a business model in which they can be distributed as far and wide as possible to the people that need it the most, that is, again, extraordinarily worthy. Uh, uh, do we know what their, what their, what their model or, or, or their breakthrough is that makes this possible? Or affordable, or how much per unit we're looking at. Yeah, I think that part of it is is that from a manufacturing point of view, there are a lot of areas that people haven't even tried to address to say, "Oh, can we make this work?" You know, gotcha. you look at you look at packaging. Okay, um, you know, the Tetra Pack was a really kind of neat invention, and the Tetra Pack, one of these things, was sort of eventually you were able to create. Oh, we can create a very inexpensive way to safely package materials and do stuff. It wasn't this huge, you know research effort or this manhattan project thing but it was people directing their attention to and we have a lot of cool technologies for people in the first world but we don't have things for people in developing we don't spend as much money and effort trying to develop things to help people in the rest of the world so it doesn't take you know oh we've developed some new you know graphite material it's like oh nobody tried to figure out how can i how can i make this spring cost you know one tenth the price because if we could do that then we can make this door work or whatever I love that kind of thinking where instead of like, ah, it's a jetpack for rich douches, it's like, yeah, hey, it's a house for people who live in environments where it's really hard to have houses. Like, that's kind of awesome. I yeah. think it's, yeah, I think it is is brilliant. So it's these tiny $17,000, 500 prefab urban escape pods uh, uh, will ship this spring. So, you know, that that is, uh, uh, you know. Uh, pretty cheap for something that looks very sturdy in all in all the pictures here it looks like something that will that will uh, uh hold up you know i guess the question yeah, is yeah. exactly how how much you can you can push them out uh to the people that need them the most 
Seventeen thousand yeah. five hundred dollars. Um, hmm. uh, we don't know. That's a year ago. And that we don't know it, that if that's is, that version. Old, but uh, yeah, uh, it, it's it's. Uh, um, uh, I, I guess uh, it's it's a high enough price that it gets close to that boxable. You, uh, we've talked about the boxable thing. The the boxable. Uh, yeah, the, the, the uh, tiny house prefab thing. Right. The the thing that allegedly uh, Elon Musk was living in. Uh, when he casually mentioned that he lives in a fifty thousand dollar, yeah. you know, five square foot house that they just ship and they do it like uh, allegedly uh-huh. the base model of the boxable is fifty thousand dollars and it looks like there's significantly less fabric used in its construction, um, which which I wonder um, uh, I I wonder uh, well we we shouldn't trust the seventeen thousand five hundred number. Yeah. regardless it's got yeah, cheaper that's than that old, yeah but but that is it's neat in that box well yeah i've seen that that's you look at that and you go oh that's really that's cool and the, and the advantage of prefab is a lot of times you're in locations where you don't have like the home Depot's not there contracting reliably getting materials but when you're able to put 30 houses in a container you know 50 you know six houses in a container truck and ship them somewhere and bring them to an environment where just we take for granted how much of the logistics and things like this we have in place like oh I need an electrician. I call an electrician. There are places where there are no licensed electricians or people you can call, and it's hard to get stuff done. Um, I have a friend, uh, Juna Runga. She, her business in uh, Africa, what they do is when they, people build apartment buildings, um, one of the things they don't really tend to focus on is how to handle sewage. And so you've got hundreds of people living inside of an apartment building, and what they often do is people bring in the water, they ship in the water, and they put the water in there, and then it just gets middle of the night gets hauled away and dumped in the river Jeez, which is oof. not good not good that's that, that's normal that's yeah. normal in a lot of places and you see these cities these african cities that have these high rises and they're building out and people are moving up you know upward mobility in that regard but the sanitation systems are practically non-existent and stuff and it's creating pollution problems her company goes in there and says okay we can build a facility with treatment system to help alleviate this problem so you're not going to have to deal with this and the idea is instead of trying to build a big, huge municipal sewer system, which yeah. is just not going to be the inertia to do that. You go developer, I have a developer, and say, "Okay, we can help you build your own." So your own system. Did yeah. uh, did did we talk about the New York Times video uh, essay that that uh, addressed? Um, uh, we don't. I don't want to get terribly political, but but you know, New York Times tends to be a leftist, a more lefty uh, publication, and. Uh, this is definitely from a Democratic. I find kind of them in the center, Brian. I think they're pretty much in the center, Brian. Uh, Old gray lady, paper of record. Sure, I, I actually don't literally know. Uh, I, I I just know what I heard about my center right. To be honest, now mm. to think about after I read my Chomsky, I think they're kind of a bit more right. Uh, but the, about that. but uh, this is this. You is, know, I've been reading some Neil Postman. I think they're pretty far right, Brian. This, this this is as I understood it, somebody of the left talking to the left about the left, uh, and and one of the messages was. Hey, you gotta. Uh, if 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 what you want is affordable housing, there's a way to get it, and it's called stop your nimbyism, which uh, and and allow people to make multi-unit uh, zoning in your city. Because what happens is, uh, and, and and it was it was a it was a very uh, kind of touching thing. It, it talks about like, look, man, you can't spread out enough to get anywhere uh, if you're going to take a half acre plots and insist that they be single family homes or whatever. You know, it, it, it's, it's an interesting question. Certainly part of the reason why California has such a scarcity on uh, housing is because of a lot of the zoning laws that, uh, and, and how uh, tough it is to build. I think that there, there tends to be a bit of a, uh, a conflation of, nimbyism in the way that we think of it, which if you're not familiar is not in my backyard or, or now the inverse yimbyism. Yes. In my backyard backyard. uh, of like, Oh, well there should be this multifamily zoning versus how tough it is, especially in some of the big population hubs in places like California that it is to build no matter what. Right. Like, like there are a lot of laws and a lot of taxes on top of uh, that beyond the question of, 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 of zoning. But it certainly is a, a, a reason why, uh, I mean, I don't know if I'd be in Texas if, if uh, uh, we could have found a place that was close to our, our uh, uh, price range in, in California. 
like, but it just simply yeah, doesn't but, exist. I mean, it also, I think it, it gets to be a very cloudy discussion because I think on both, both political sides have the things they want to talk about and the things they don't, or the things yeah. they acknowledge they don't like in California, nobody wants to bring up meth how much meth has contributed to this because that comes into the sort of, well, then it's blaming the victim. It's like, no, I, I, I'm in the, I'm in the camp of, you know, somebody, whether somebody has a mental health issue or has an addiction thing, you treat them with compassion, try to help them get out of it. I'm not into blaming somebody like that, but you look at the amount of pressure, you know, that causes when you start looking, when they do surveys to actually find out like what percentage of the people and then the homeless problem, what that does is you all of a sudden you have a strain on services and a strain on resources that for the working population that then are people who fall, you know, who, who get into, you know, some economic difficulty, it makes less things available to them. So we don't in California, we don't want to deal with the drug problem. We don't want to say there's a drug problem. We don't want to address the fact there's a drug problem. But when you go down to, you know, Skid Row, and then the areas like I've watched the watch the encroachment of, you know, the homeless, just get closer and closer further away from the subway system in North Hollywood to the, you know, the edge of Burbank. And you see sidewalks I used to be able to walk down in Los Angeles. You cannot anymore because they're covered in tents. And it's like, and we go like, well, is that a housing crisis? Well, and, I think and, there's and a housing problem. To, to, to be clear, you don't mean like you don't feel safe walking down them. You mean physically you have to walk into the street because the entire yeah, sidewalk yeah. is taken up by by. You, yeah, you physically tents. cannot yeah. walk down. I used to, there's, I'm like driving past where I'm like, oh yeah, I used to walk from here. Like, oh, I can't walk there because it's entirely covered by tents. Yet there'll be police, you know, pulling over women, you know, moms making right hand turns against the light. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, like we'll enforce that, <laughs> you know, but we're not. And it's and and I'm like, like, hey, like every one of those people out there, they're a human being. They're worthy of our compassion. They yes. deserve it. You know, we got to figure out what we can do to help them. And they're they're not a oh, it's self inflicted because you know you talk to some of these people and you find out like. I was going down my bike path and we had to wait for her, you know, wait, you know, waited, I waited half an hour for paramedics to show up because this girl who was having, was in the middle of the street flipping out and she talked, was talking about her drugs, but I could also get the sense she probably had a history of some sort of psychological issues and probably abuse and all things together, you know, make a person having the worst day that didn't want that to be their day, but had to deal with these coping mechanisms. And it's, it's easy to go, oh, well, that's just us on drugs. And it's like, well, this person was probably went through a lot of things that put yeah. them there. Like, and I guess my point is saying this, but we don't want to talk about the drug component. We don't want to say, well, well and you that's, know, the prevalence and that's, of meth. Cause you're, cause you're saying that, that when, when we talk about the idea of a housing shortage in California, that, that that is often tied to the idea of, Oh, well there's a housing shortage. And so that's why there is this prevalence and explosion of homelessness. Like, right. Uh, uh, and, and look, uh, uh, there were, there was a, a thread yesterday that I read on Twitter that was one, is a newer book. And one of the things is an older book that, that talks about some deep reporting within both in the Bay area and in Los Angeles, uh, that overwhelmingly the reason why people are out in the streets are drug problem. They are, they're, they are drug addicts. They are, that have, you know, uh, uh, financially strapped their lives because of it. And, uh, uh, between fentanyl and, and methamphetamines, that's, that's, you know, a big problem. That being said, again, it, there is there is also the other side of it where it's like the the median housing price in California is seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Like that's that's the middle of the road, uh, uh, you know, in in simply because the two population and that's a massive state, right? The, the state isn't only Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Oakland. Like it is very very big, but the the housing prices in those population centers are so 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 high that it, it, it drags the entire state's average up. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, well, yeah. Yeah. And say and part of that, it, it is part of it is like, yeah, the, the, the limits on how big in buildings, but also it's like the, uh, like there are laws to like, think about like what Surbanes Oxley did, which is the idea we have to have all these accounting laws to prevent like another Enron or old com. And the big companies were fine with it because the accounting that it takes to do that was a rounding error for them to hire that. If you yeah. were a smaller company, it was a burn. So, so if you were a developer right now and you're like, cool, I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out further east in California and do a lesser, like you can buy land really freaking cheap, yeah, really, really cheap. If you want to go build stuff though, your permitting costs and all this stuff is so ridiculously high it's not the cost of the house. It's the regulatory stuff that just gets in your way. Like 
you could, in theory, like build an entire new development out here and your, your actual functional costs would be low. And it's not even the limits on how tall the thing could be. Like we, that forces us, why can't we build more housing in a city? But you can't build a new community. Yeah. Unless it's going to be, it has to be for $3 million homes to make it worthwhile. And that's, that's it's, ultimately like, you know, in, in, in the near decade that I was in Oakland, the entire skyline was reshaped. Many, many, many buildings built, many buildings rehabbed. Not a lot for anybody in anything that was under a $2,000 a month rental situation. And it was because the, the cost that went into doing any of that, largely based on city regulation, that was the only market that would make sense. Like you couldn't make yeah. middle level uh, uh, apartments. Like for us, like for what we were paying, there was not an option unless we wanted to drastically spend, spend more for, to be totally honest, like what were essentially just kind of like fancy dorms. They weren't even big yeah. or, or nice. And you could, we're, we're willing, like, why are we willing to have like people fly all the way out to move all the way out to Austin instead of even some other further out community in California or some other part of there where there's not the density in their stuff. And do you think that's part of the problem? Like why, why is it more attractive to go there than even be 40 miles away from Los Angeles? Yeah. And it's because even then, if you're a developer, it's too prohibitively expensive to build anything out there like that. And, and there is uh, something about that, uh, man, uh, urban sprawl is a real problem. Like that whole three, three plus months that I was living in mm -hmm. L.A., uh, never once saw Andrew Maine because he lived, get ready, six and a half miles away. <laughs> <laughs> and that is that is and, a gulf. <laughs> that yeah. might as well have been like a, a, a from here Milwaukee. to Milwaukee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like uh, when you travel around LA is kind of like you got to have a tide chart to sort of yes, see like, yeah. what time. Like, okay. And I remember I'd meet like a pretty girl, like, oh, cool, where do you live? And I'm like, oh, cool, I'll go. And then I like, like, oh, I got to have like, I got to. This will like, never work. <laughs> geographically undesirable, all of a sudden yeah. became real. Because even in South Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Within a hundred square feet. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do our picks. Oh, uh, man. Hey, I liked Hawkeye this week. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'll double down on Hawkeye. It gets the, the Brian Brushwood Most Improved Award because those first two episodes I thought were bad. And then well, this is the fourth three, one. I know. Oh. And the third oh, okay. one, see, I was telling a story about how it's improved. Gotcha. Uh, then the third one, I was like, wait, is it just me or is this not bad? And then the fourth episode, I'm like, this is adorable, and I'm having a good time. And now I understand those Rotten Tomato reviews that said anything other than boo at the beginning. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I like the character work. I thought the character work uh, uh, with uh, uh, Hawkeye and Kate Bishop were good. Uh, uh, I continue to like the fact that uh, it is a whodunit. Um, and I'm excited to see, because what, it's only one episode or two episodes before it wraps up? Oh really? We're only uh, this was only the fourth episode. Yeah, there are six episodes. Six oh, episodes. Yeah. Oh, too short. Uh, thumbs down. <laughs> I I thought we were finally ramping up for like uh, six more episodes of something. I, I can't really imagine how to how they would do six more episodes where nothing happens. <laughs> uh, well, plus also uh, uh, a significant plot device is that he's got to make it home for Christmas. Yeah. And Christmas <laughs> is in two weeks. Right. Anyway, uh, I liked it. All right. Tried to pull out my, tried to pull out my AirPods in time, but I missed it. <laughs> oh, that we liked it. <laughs> no, the plot point, but yeah, that's uh, all right. Um, that was so. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know that we even. It's just, fine. Yeah, it's, right. let's move on. <laughs> okay. We're moving on. <laughs> We're moving on. Brian, you don't. We, again, we don't you don't need to litigate. We're moving on. Money. We're moving on. Right, you're right, Andrew. Correct. Therefore, sir, no. Uh, yeah, no, uh, uh, so, so I doubled down on, on, on Hawkeye, most improved. Uh, I, I got a quick pick. Uh, uh, last week I picked Forza Horizon, and now I'm picking Gran Turismo Sport. I'm liking racing games, and it was like $8 on PlayStation, so. Quite uh, the racist lately. Mm, I shouldn't have had double thumbs up when you said that. <laughs> uh, so, GT Sport. Andrew? Uh, so my pick is, I, I, I've gone on before about how much how much i love this golden age of youtube we live in the age in which people who are really passionate about something can create something wonderful that never would have had a chance to exist before and uh we mentioned brian mentioned it briefly but the latest issue of defunct land which goes into like disney's fast pass and all this 
It is an hour and a half deep dive into the history of Fast Pass, Fast Pass Plus, all of that. And I'm going to do a spoiler for you. There's a point where, you know, because they talk about the debate, like, does Fast Pass make it better? That's the ticket you could get to go ahead of the line. Then they started making it where you could, you know, if you order, if you got a hotel room on property 60 days out, you could get your Fast Passes ahead of time, which then meant that rides sometimes would have no availability, like two months out would be already booked. And he's talking about the debate. Is it make it better? Do more people get to go on rides and whatever? And then he has this throwaway in there. He's like, you know, in order to really figure this out, because people debate this, you would have to have an industrial engineer design a computer system to map out, like, you know, what would be the preference choices and what would be the outcomes and all of this, and, you know, create an entire piece of software to do this. And then Kevin Percher, the guy who does Defunct Land, then proceeds to show us the entire <laughs> computer modeling system they put together to figure out does fast pass fast pass plus or without it make your life better or worse and for which groups of people and then they run and completely do entire simulations of this and he's got these great animations that go along with it uh and he yeah, creates well, and a place called the, shape yeah yeah the uh, yeah, oh, i thought it was geometry land but yeah it's a a, a, land, a, yeah. a fictitious place called shape land where there are different attractions of different pro popularity from the, you know, the Pentagon ride to the pyramid ride or whatever. Yeah. And then stay tuned to find out because Shapeland has a secret, which it's worth, you know, sticking around. But the point is the detail at which, and by the way, when they showed the code, remember I've talked about the idea of coding notebooks and collab. That's what they showed was they show this notebook environment. I, I got I'm nerded out. I'm like, yeah, this is the future, everybody. But it was so detailed and... I, I know that Disney has their own people that do projections and statistics and stuff. And I also know that sometimes some departments have stuff they use that they like or they don't like or whatever. But the amount of effort, the amount of attention they put into doing this was phenomenal. And uh, it is, it is the, this is the age in which we live in when a person who's passionate about something can make use of computing resources and ask important questions and tell us something meaningful about the world around us or something that we just kind of go, well, I don't know. I don't know. Like, no, they did. And I, I, I believe the data. I think the data they showed is consistent. And I think that it was a really uh, TV document, TV shows, news programs don't go to this detail. Yep. You know, and that I and this is what I loved is they he did the work. He did the work and it shows and I love it. So. Uh, and also I, I, I would put especially and he just gets better and better. Um, the level of polish in the presentation is uh, mm -hmm. superior to uh, uh, cable TV quality in many ways. Yeah, this is this is documentary. I mean, if this was this could be a documentary, you know, at a film festival. It, it's just, you know, just the, how deeply he dives into this stuff. It's at three and a half million views, which is great. And this only came out less than a month ago, which clearly people like it. And just, you know, what a, uh, hey kids. There's something you're passionate about or excited about. Go. Don't be afraid to do a deep, deep dive into it. You know, like the 1960 election or something or something else, because you might discover things that people didn't realize. Mm -hmm. so. Cool. It's been weird. I got like a dry lip. And so as I lean closer, I see that I'm talking and I'm trying to like bite that off. Like, uh, <laughs> could be worse. You could have an itch right on your nipple and then be scratching your nipple just as Bryce turns the camera oh, over to you tweaking right. your I, nipple. I that. <laughs> well, that's, oh, that, that definitely happened. <laughs> uh, How'd the piercing go, Brian? <laughs> it's a little irritated. Uh, we're going to uh, take a minute here, take a break and uh, come back for some after things. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, okay. Andrew, what do you, what do you, uh, uh is, are, are there any other surprises as far as stuff that you're consuming right now that, that, that we haven't talked about recently? I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling kind of the itch to go back and re-experience, um, Pandora Star, uh, and, and all of the Commonwealth saga afterward. Yeah, the, I, I've tried, I've started this, uh, and I, I've been like only listening to like 10 minutes a night and then I forget it and I have to go re-listen re to it. But I found an entire series by S.M. Sterling and David Drake called The General. Yeah. Which is this sort of like uh, future empire building war sort of story. And it's like, there's like eight books in the series. And I'd read S.M. Sterling years ago and liked him. I think David Drake's a capable writer. So I'm doing that. Um, 
but I just haven't had time. Like, I'm so behind on everything. Yeah. Pandora Star is great. I was at, uh, let me show you if I can, I took a, I was back at the open A offices and I took a photo of, we had a bookshelf there. And because I was walking by and, uh, I don't know if you can see, uh, that blur is, oh, oh, oh Peter here. F. Hamilton. Goddamn. Pandora Star. That's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. So I was, yeah, the bookshelf there, I saw Pandora Star, uh, a snow crash a fire upon the deep <laughs> and i'm like joe haldeman i'm like man like this is my shelf there might be a reason why i'm here i'm home <laughs> you know uh cliff singer in the chat was saying that he's uh, made about 60 percent of the way of pandora star um uh you're far enough now to know that uh it's not crazy like just it just keeps going and because it takes place in a world where technology is so advanced it's not at all weird that hundreds or thousands of years into the future uh versions of the same characters show up it's it's so cool oh i gotta show you something really cool this is what i, I was flying out of burbank airport and i saw it again uh that blur is about as good as it gets anyways let me it's, put my finger there <laughs> it's you know. a, a, it's a, a an albino blue whale uh, <laughs> let me turn off the blurring um It's doing a good job of now knowing that that is not your face. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's um something a, a great in, white whale. What is a it? A tarp. It's it's a it's, it it's it's a it's a fire festival frat bro. Uh, oh yeah, it's a jupe. It's one of the jupes. <laughs> what are we looking at? You ready? Yeah. This is in a lot car lot where they have a lot of movie cars and vehicles. Is that? Wait, is that the Ghostbusters uh, vehicle? No, no, it no. does look kind of like the franchise. hearse. Uh, uh, the Batmobile. The Batmobile. One of the Batmobiles. Blade Runner spinner. Oh. oh. First time leaving, it wasn't wrapped, and I looked out. My, I'm like looking out the window. I'm like, what the? Yeah. Like, oh, oh, the, 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 there's a spinner. People looking at me like this guy having it. Fit and I'm like, it's a blue rose spinner, blue rose spinner, spinner. And I could try to call up my camera, I couldn't get a photo. And then the second time, I'm like, I'm waiting. I'm just like, this woman sitting across me is looking at this weirdo with this camera, getting like, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. And then it was wrapped, but I knew what it was. I know it, I know who you are. Uh, did everybody go take their break? Yep, yep. Um, uh, do we know what we want to do for after things? Did we have a topic from last week we didn't get to? Yeah, I had forwarded you an email that we didn't have really time to get because of uh, because there wasn't a lot of time last week. Yeah, um, I think there was a good one. Um, oh, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, from the 6th. Here we go. The big gym. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I got a heart out at one, so we'll get this thing rolling and go. Cool. Oh, okay. Uh all right, then then here we go. I'll just catch you in. Here we go. You ready? Uh, okay. Uh, in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the After Things podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Uh, hello. Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hola, friends. And Bryce Castillo. Hello, everybody. All right. So, um... This is a we got a we got a letter from Big Jim and we love it when people send us questions and respond you know ask ask for our input on it because uh, you know we're not content just messing up our own lives. So Big Jim starts off. It says Andrew, your book of L.A. disgust inspired me to write what I knew and felt baffled by my industry. I don't know what book that would be. Uh, but. No, that's <laughs> uh, uh, you, you, we're talking about the wrong Andrew here. That would be Andrew Heaton who wrote. He, uh, oh yes, that's who right. He did L.A. That. Yeah, is yeah, hideous. Yeah. The the uh, uh, number one uh, poetry book on Amazon. Yes, that now it all comes together. I'm like, yeah, what? And I Wrong really wrote a book about that, and I completely yeah. forgot. Yeah, I figured that part out. So I decided to test myself and see if I could do something so crazy it might be fun. Can I write a book of poetry in less than 20? Why is he writing to me? Does he think we're the same person? This was You were not originally on this thread. Um, it had been, I think, redirected from Brian over to as an after things possible discussion topic. Yeah, ah. uh, 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 okay. 
I believe you. That sounds like that. Happened sounds like more sounds than a like Brian. Ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So I decided to test myself, see if I could do something crazy and be fun. Can I write a book of poetry in less than 24 hours? I can confidently say no, no, I cannot. But what I can do is write a book of Japanese style poetry, haikus, in less than 24 hours, about seven hours to be exact. And that includes writing, editing, creating my own cover, which doesn't look that bad, and teaching myself how to do the whole Kindle Direct publisher interface thing. Cool. Hold on. It's just a note, not a note, not a crit, but, you know, a book is a nebulous concept. You know, you could just put a bunch of blank pages and say, I wrote a book. Um, you know, so word length matters. But when it comes to poetry, I have no idea. Well, gents, it's ready to go. I'm ready to press the publish button for the Kindle ebook and paper uh, $1 and paperback $5. Again, the goal is not to make money, but to say that I accomplished the goal and to put it on a resume. So why, after all that bother in my email and you, I need to know when would be the most effective time to publish. Is there a time set or day that works the best? Do I need to do a ton of self-promotion if I just want to have something out there? My point is I want to be successful and I want this to be something I can show my kids that I did and have some impact. Also, yes, if you need to fill a spot in ink so I can plug my book, I'm totally down for that. Uh, so uh, books have a very, very long time frame. A book can be out there and can sit there. And with the world of digital publishing, it is not. And this is a thing where traditional publishers don't realize. Traditional publishers come from the world where because of a law that was passed in like 1980, 1981, about how you had to expense things, traditional publishers basically have three months to make a thing work or then they just burn all the copies of it and they count it as a write-off, which is – Maybe makes sense to an accountant, but it's really dumb because you don't get slow build. You yeah. don't get things that build up over time. You basically clear out the warehouse because they think, well, if it's going to be a hit, it's going to be a hit, which is dumb. Even though it's 2021, publishers still think that way. The reality is you can put a book out there and you can let it grow over time. And publishers did this too in their own way. They would do pre-publication copies. They would give stuff out a year in advance, way in advance to try to build you they give out hundreds of copies to try to build some sort of momentum for it. And then they kind of forgot that that's a thing they did. And then say, hey, the book launched. How's it doing? Oh, not so good. Okay, kill it. Digital, doesn't matter. Digitally, just put it out there. Put it out there right now. Promote it. Get people to read it. Twist arms to get people to write reviews for it. Reviews matter on Amazon. Reviews create momentum. And over time, you just build that up. You get people that, you know, when you start getting a lot of reviews come in, it starts to help with it. Uh, the problem is, is you're in poetry, which really isn't even writing at all, if you ask me. So good luck with that. <laughs> all right. Can, can, let me let me just take this out one more meta level here. Uh, I think we all subscribe to the idea that, you know, like, like uh, Marshall McLuhan has said, the medium is the message. Right. Each and every one of these genres have something that they are rewarded for or people specifically, if not inherently or involuntarily, look for and reward. I am not the final arbiter on this, but I believe that books, audiobooks, ebooks, physical books demand some element of refinement, some element of editing shaping that you are putting forth something that has had i would hazard to say no matter how productive your initial 24 hours are something more than 24 hours worth of effort now that is not to say that in our modern world we don't have places where 24 hours worth of intense effort is not rewarded it is very well rewarded on Twitter. It's very well rewarded on blogs. Cable is, news. Well, that's that's a different <laughs> twenty four hours. But like, but but yeah, I, I think that that there are elements for which that you have access to that the average person has access to that these that amount of time, effort, and concentration can very much be rewarded. My sense is that a book, an ebook, is not necessarily. The, the place for it. I know that Heaton had written those particular poems over X amount of weeks and then refined them and refined them and refined them and refined them. And by the time that he went out and was asking to be on, let's say, you know, uh, for the, for the millions of people that listen to uh, Glenn Beck's radio show and podcast to be a guest so we could read those poems, those poems were refined to a point that they were ready to be in book format. The people who listened to those uh, poems being read wanted to go out and 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 buy them. Uh, 
all I would say to anybody, we always hear our very creativity plus. We are never going to tell anybody, don't do a thing. Please, always do the thing. But in our modern world where there are so many options, so many baskets that you can put your effort, I do also think that thinking about which basket you are going to put it in will ultimately help you in, in the level of what is at the back end of this email, uh, validation, success, and making a mark. That's where that kind of thought beyond the initial burst of effort is, is going to pay off for you in terms of putting it out there so people, the audience, fickle and distracted, is going to be more receptive to the effort that you are putting out there. So, so uh, which, which basket do you perceive this project would belong in? A Twitter account. A Twitter account or maybe an Instagram account or something like that, where it's like, now, if you, if you spend 24 hours working on something... And then you start to release one a day and you tell people, hey, for free, go sign up to this thing. And you are putting out a thing and you can market to, you can use certain hashtags. You can find certain audiences that are into this very specific thing. Because I know that Big Jim's thing is, this is about international logistics. He wrote haikus about international logistics, which is where his business is. He can find certain elements, especially if it's like the supply chain or something like that. You, there are people that want to talk about this specific thing right now. You can find and capture their attention. Now, if that finds an audience, compile all these and and put them in a book and then sell the book. Uh, 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 there is there is a, a then now you are servicing a fan base. Uh, but but for me, if you're thinking about again, 24 hours worth of effort, blogs and social media to me is where that amount of effort is rewarded. Some of the best things that exist in those mediums were completed within that time frame? Uh, I, I think that I, I'm mostly on board with that, except for the fact that if Elon Musk wrote the exact same book in the exact same amount of time, I think it would be a bestseller. Why? Uh, because would be he would be harvesting a lifetime of achievement. Right. And so, uh, 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 that, and this is where we diverge because whether you intended to or not, you uh, uh, said after you become famous, then for this thing, then do it. Elon Musk is not famous for being a haikuist. He's not famous for uh, uh, for uh, publishing books, um, but he has enough uh, mental real estate that he could do literally anything. Yes. And it could be a 24 hour project and it could be best of, he could do, he could record a karaoke single in 24 hours and it'll be number one right. or whatever. But, but it will then get trashed. It will then get trashed and savaged. Like and that's the song the that he made. Uh, yeah. uh, sure. But that it, but, also earns you more mental real estate. And maybe, sure. maybe in Brian's world, that's good. But I guarantee you, if I was a poet and I wrote my first book of poetry in 24 hours and I put it out there because I wanted to show the world I did it and I had a bunch of one stars and two stars, the fact, and they will not care that I wrote it in 24 hours, I would not feel good. I would not feel good. I would not be feel good about myself. I could rationalize, oh, I should because this. Nope, because now my claim to fame is I wrote a crappy book of poetry. And I'm a thing, I'm sure his is great, by the way. Let me make that very clear. So I think that's the cost part. I wrote a book in 24 hours. Did I release it? No. Why? It was not good. Was not good. And nobody I, reading it is gonna go, oh, he, you know, haiku's different. I'm sure Big probably wrote the best book of logistical haiku ever. And I think for him, I think he just wants to have a book out. I think for him, and that's fine. Begins, you know. Yeah, I think I think to me, all the first part of the email. I did a thing. I wanted to know I could do a thing. I wanted to know that I I, I could go because that's another thing that we say on this show all the time is learn how to go from soup to nuts. Like learn how to go from idea to hitting publish. There is a value, a tremendous value in understanding how the entire process works. First have the email, all that, totally get it. The question of how should I promote it? What shows should I go on to make sure it's a success? That's where That's where it's like, okay, well, if we're in that market, if we're in the let's spread it around and 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 like get success or acclaim from it. I just think, and I'm not saying that there's one right or wrong way to eat a Reese's, but I do think that there are, at least in my view, there's guidance and thought that should go into where they should live if what you want is validation and success. Yeah, I, agreed. I, I, uh, I, th I think uh, uh, it sounds like we got one vote for don't publish, one vote for 
delay publish and my right. vote. Wait, wait, no, or, hey, like, I don't know. Where, I don't know. Where, where do you think oh, mine is? You said 24 hours worth of effort should be on Twitter or blogs and no, eventually no, no. Best, be best. published. No, that's not what I said. Okay. I said you asked the best place for that amount of effort to go. If I were to think like where, where it would go. Yeah. Again, to learn how to put it out and publish it, publish it. Everybody go do it. Right. right. Like my, my thing is in, in the back half, if he's like, how do I get success and validation from it? That's that to me is, 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 is a separate different animal. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm all for, if you want the book out there, just publish it. Publish but yeah, it. If you want success and validation, then wait. But if you just want to say, Hey, I've got a book. I did it. I think no. you, I think this is a topic of interest to the entire world. I think that it is a niche, uh, angle that would be, uh, I think that you hit publish this morning and possibly within 24 hours, you're the wacky news item of the day on, on some extended cable outlet, a book of haikus about shipping containers. Uh, that's how bad the problem is. We've got the author of blank. Who's going to talk about it. Like it doesn't even matter how good or bad it is. Now you are building a reputation as like all that matters is you're an expert in logistics and you were moved to write a book of poetry. That's a news item that earns you some curiosity looks, some follows on your Twitter, your blog, or whatever. And and then you, you got time to, like, like, it doesn't sound like he wants to be a haikuist for a living. Uh, it sounds like he wanted to check check off a box and wanted to know the best way to promote it. And and I think there's well, something I, there. I, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, uh, yeah, there's a difference between, hey, I just want to put out a book, and then, hey, I want to promote something. And the thing you promote, I do think you do need to make sure there's a threshold of quality to it. Because there's a point where if it looks too half-assed, people will dismiss it. If he wants to promote it and it's about logistics or something, that that's great because then what you do is you send it to the people to the P who you know the PR department of FedEx or these container companies or whatever. You get it in the hands there, get some funny quotes back, and then you create a story that you can start to shape. Oh, this really what's the most popular today? The most popular book of poetry was about logistics, and here's you have to do a little more effort to create the state. You know the story. And, and by the way, roll you the dice and hope that. To, to Big Jim's point, that's what he's asking. So, Brian, let me ask you this. How does he go from the point that he's at now to the point that you just mentioned, where he's the, 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 the wacky news item? Uh, well, uh, 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 that, that might be bigger than the time allotted, but, but uh, uh, I mean, basically follow the blueprint of what we did with uh, the Diamond Club, an objectively not good book that ended up with Justin on, on the media in PR. It was the right book for the right idea for the right cultural gestalt. It did not matter you, that you it had, was bad. We press publish. It did very well. You had a hundred people working on it to help promote it though. Remember, that's the thing. If it had just been, you know, two people without a social media account, it would have been a different story that you had that many people. You had that critical mass of people you need to push and promote something to help that. Uh, uh right. But that way. So I, 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 uh, uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure I follow. Uh, My point is, if you want to get something to move on Amazon and you want to get traction, you need X number of people to help you do that. You had that. You had that with what you did there. OK, the, the majority you know, the of the push came from uh, uh, social proof on the sales. Uh, no, from from the Reddit post that caused the social proof of the sales. It was just the right idea. So we had it was an objective. So it was the it was viral a, video that we made that that was that pitched it. that that pitched it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and with your and audience I'm, again. Uh, Sorry. Again, it wasn't our audience. It was the Reddit it was, audience. Yeah, it, it, was, it, it, it was a meritocracy. It, 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 you, it, it you, took off with it, yeah. How did you make the video? Who? who how did this get discovered? Uh, how we, was it found? Uh, we recorded on the iPhone, uh, uh, edited it. And who did this go to? Did it stay on your iPhone? Yeah. Where did it, it go well, to? It went to Reddit again. Uh, Probably, I think, YouTube. For okay. Me. And do you have a name or do you have any recognition? I, my point is, I, I think you're saying, well, this experiment worked for you. It'll work for Jim. I'm no skeptical about that. Uh, 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 it's the same thing with uh, you start. Uh, uh, the numbers change, but the game stays the same, whether it's performing on a street corner, building a Twitter following, uh, starting on YouTube, uh, 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 developing a show or anything. It's the same game just with with uh, uh, first there's single digits, then you add a zero, then you add a zero, then you add a zero. Right. But you I, start. I got it. We to be continued, I have to run. Okay. <laughs> or continue without me. It's all good. Um, 
So, I mean, I guess really, I'm glad that we got, because what I really wanted to drill down was not to challenge your point, but rather because I think that there's a lot of intuitive thoughts that you have and you know that for you are like autocomplete of like, here's a thing. Now we're going to get it out, you know, there. So it's like, it's like, oh, follow the, 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 the blueprint we had for the Diamond Club. And it's like, okay, well, let's actually break that down. The blueprint we had for the Diamond Club was first get people very excited because there was a multi-week process of putting this together sure. from initial concept to, Oh my God, each week we're going to check in and here are some wild things to, Hey guys, volunteer army where we're, we need to proofread this. We need somebody to pick stuff. Then we had people submit uh, uh, covers and, and we had our, our, our thing. So it's like a multi-week thing with our audience, right? Which was, was you know, a, a, a compact, but mighty right. uh, in terms of, of, of activity. Then we picked a date we were going to launch. We, we as we had done for everything else, uh, uh, circled that on the calendar, said, everybody get ready to buy, everybody get ready to buy. Uh, you, we happened to be in the same city. So we shot a video, edited the video, uh, posted it on YouTube, and then read it. And then at that point, it, it it gets traction there, which makes it get traction on the blogs, if I remember correctly. Uh, no. Uh, then what happened was, is enough people there said, "Yeah, I'll give you a buck," and we uh, uh, did well enough on launch day that we hit our our uh, attraction or, or our our um, uh, attention grabbing goal Number. of hitting yeah. the top ten in a new and soft platform of iBooks. Uh, and then, uh, and then after that, uh, the news item became our own success. It became a self-feeding animal. So the way it looks for big Jim. And we also had Vuk, who was our publisher that leveraged their PR stuff because they, yes, no, uh, yes, uh, they did. Uh, uh, well, they, 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 uh, I would imagine that, that, uh, any success story they did, but it wasn't like, like, uh, I went and asked them to, no, please no, 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 no. They, they came to us because they wanted to push the fact that they were a book publishing platform and they right. wanted to highlight us as a success to do right. anything. So, yeah. so the version for Big Jim is uh, he's got an, uh, uh, the world's first book of haikus on international shipping logistics. At a moment where international shipping logistics is the enjoying maybe the most popularity as a subject in the last, you know, in my lifetime. So what he does is he takes the book and says, hey, I got this book. Uh, let me send it to all my friends. Oh, this is hilarious. Let me send it to so-and-so. And then you say, you, you, you have, it, there are some kind of industry shipping quarterly magazines out there. You find out who writes for what. Hey, could I get a quote? Do you want to put this in? Uh, if you'd like to, you could carve this up and put this on the back page of whatever. And then uh, make it, uh, uh, and then, and then, you know, uh, let me let me get a quote from various CEOs who are being impacted, who I listen to, who are, you know, possibly even Elon Musk. Like, hey, uh, uh, wait, you know, look for that moment where it's just like, well, Cybertruck was going to come out today, but we're missing one windshield wiper. And he's like, and then that might be the right time to to, to get at him. reply Elon Musk and like, ask like, for a quote a for book. your international it, logistics exactly haiku right. Thing. It's like, well, I wrote this book. Here's a free copy to check out the thing or whatever. Uh, and then, uh, uh, or uh, and and again, this is all after it's published because it's in the store or whatever. And then yeah, you, you hammer and you catch the right person at the right time. Then you got a quote and you get the attention. And if it's the right time and the right idea, qual the quality legitimately does not matter. Yeah, I mean, like how yes. many, how many oh, no, bad no, no, no. songs uh, so, have hit number one? How many objectively bad books have hit number? Well, one? I mean, I, that that gets into personal taste, right? Right, and and so I, I do think that even songs that we think of as terrible, there are musical reasons why they have become earworms. There are social gestalt, gestalt versions, books that or movies that we think are horrible are successful for reasons beyond our personal uh, uh, taste. I think I'm I'm understanding what you're what what, what you're saying now, which is that marketing and uh, 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 mass, you know, hysteria, for lack of a better word, can trump uh, quality. Like that, it can become Correct. its own thing like, with like, anything. I, I would say, I would say if even one word was changed in the book, The Diamond Club, to make it an objectively better book, like if one spelling error was, was fixed, it would change nothing about th that story. No. 
That being said, <laughs> the point, the, con- the concept is, LOL, we put together a bunch of random words. It's basically above lorem ipsum, but with, you know, uh, graphic sex. And, 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 and- uh, isn't this funny? Let's push this ahead. And then the other thing, not to toot my own horn, but like the stuff that wound up getting highlighted in the stories were like passages for which I actually tried to write funny erotic fiction. Right. And people were like, oh, that's what happens when, because that was never marketed as like, hey, we really tried. Somebody who got a degree in writing tried to write something really funny. Sure. It was just like, Here's another example of the random stuff we put together. And so it showed a degree of like, oh, this could be really funny. Isn't this a fun internet moment? Like that story was very, very cohesive. And I agree with you. Anything can be a cohesive story if you put together the right, you know, narrative around it. Sure. Uh, uh, it, well, and, and I guess what I'm saying is if the advice is put more effort into it, get it more polished. It doesn't sound to me like replacing the word flower with a better word like lotus uh, will will in any way change the shape of this. Um, however, spending that same amount of effort to find out who will find this funny and an interesting story uh, and like the same amount of time to send off an email like, hey, is this a funny idea? Yes, no. That is going to bear more fruit than making it any better than it is right now. So if we only released the garbage edits of World's Greatest Con and put the exact same amount of effort into marketing it, do you think that it would have an effect on its ultimate success? Uh, No, because we are not answering an unmet need in the universe. We are jockeying for position in an increasingly crowded space. Uh, There is an unmet need in the universe for levity in what is unquestionably a global disaster. And when there's an, uh, when there's a call oh, for the universe, okay. I when see, there's I a see vacuum, what you're saying. it doesn't care if it's sucking in helium or nitrogen or, so or you, my you, fart. You, you, you like, believe that this is uh, the right time at the right place I, I mean, uh, for this book? Could It could be. And the only way you find out is by hit and publish. And if the advice is, yeah, but make it good, I would say... Uh, being good ain't going to change the trajectory of this. I, I it, think it, I think it's either I think the we're, right we're, time we're, for we're it talking about two different things. I mean, like, like like for me, I'm I am saying if this is something that you want to do and you want for people, because again, it's like in terms of hitting publish, if you if you like, it really depends on your goals. Like, if you want your friends and loved ones to read the book and be like, oh my god, what a great book! I'm glad that you are a great author. I didn't know that you were able to write like this. I would suggest putting more than 24 hours into the book. Like if your goal is like, like you've mentioned, find an unmet need in the universe and, and fill it. Then yes, every day you should take 24 hours to identify possible unmet needs in the universe and put out a thing and then do the same amount, if not more time in pushing it and finding the right channels for which for it to, to go forward. Right. And an example of that is when I was touring, even in the very early days when there's, you know, 30 to 50 people in the audience or whatever, uh, there was an unmet need of the show is now over. I wish there was a thing I could buy and a thing I could sign. And so I spent uh, less than a week writing down, uh, uh, collecting 57 of my favorite bar bets. Uh, The entire book is quote unquote, 36 pages long, actually eight sheets of double-sided uh, uh, printer paper that I stapled in the middle and and uh, 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 put a fluorescent yellow cover on that said cheats, con, swindles, and tricks. And uh, uh, I would sell them for $5 after the show, and I conservatively, geez, Louise, um, made uh, between thirty and $60,000 over, over the following 15 years selling them at shows. So I, I uh, there were spelling errors in it. The the doodles were hand drawn. It was an MVP minimum viable sure product. Uh, so were you seeking validation from friends and families and strangers on it? Uh, I certainly took validation from it and made sure in my emails to say uh, Brian Brushwood, touring magician and author of 
book you'll never read. Jeet yeah. Kahn's way, uh, the, there is value to author of, and, and uh, it weren't no lie. Sure. Uh, so, so I, I mean, again, I'm, I'm still not hearing much different between what Big Jim did and, and, and what I did. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm, a, I would say you were doing it to to uh, uh, sell after your show. He is he is putting it into the universe and asking what he should do next. Uh, I think you had an idea on what you wanted to do with it. You have, I'll, I'll say, based on Big Jim's email, you have a lot more of a clear idea of what Big Jim should be doing with this than Big Jim does. Right. Uh, so, like, all, all I'm, I mean, I, I, I think you are you are reading a lot more friction in our ideas than I think really exists. All, all, all I was saying was, I do think that there is, uh, 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 depending on whatever you want out of it, maybe I'm reading this incorrect as well. It, it sounded like he was like, okay, well, what next? And I was like, well, either you let this go and, or you put a lot more time than you did into the book into marketing the book. Uh, uh, and, and I guess those well, are different and, and, ways. And I think that's the big question is, uh, uh, to reflect back to big Jim is, is you have to decide internally, like, do I, is this the first step of eventually becoming a great haikuist or do I really just want to put the words and author of, um, uh, and, and, uh, 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 as far as his specific question of, uh, most effective time to publish, um, uh, I mean, uh, the, the boy, that even more, the answer is it depends on what you want to get out of this. Cause if what you, 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 you like, uh, that was all I was saying, by the way, is I, it depends. The, 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 uh, yeah, the answer, the answer is it, it, I was not saying not publish or delay publishing. If you want to just get it out there then get it out there. Cause again, I think that there is a huge, like a, a massive problem that we have in any kind of creative endeavor are people stalling out at some point before they hit publish. Like yeah. it is a huge benefit to get to the end because then, you know, what in the process you like, what in the process you don't like. And then also the fact that like, once you would publish, you're really, if you want money, success, validation, you're not even halfway done. Like you have, you have begun, you, you've crossed the first threshold in, 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 in the hero's journey. You still right. have so much more to go. Well, and, and, and uh, I, I, I think that per this, it's like, if your goal, the goal of a first book is to be your first book. And, and I, I truly do believe that you have to be bad before you're good. And so whether you hit publish or don't hit publish, you know, that that's depends on how much you want to be known as a haikuist. Uh, but, but if what you want is, um, uh, the trappings of authority, some to uh, an excuse to capture attention, then, you know, I would say, uh, uh, six months ago would have been the best time to publish. Yeah. Well, hopefully that works. There we go. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jim. If you've got a question you would like us to hash out here on the After Things podcast, check out the show notes, neshcom at gmail.com. Make sure you put After Things in the subject line. Uh, there we go, guys. Any last thoughts for After Things? Uh, my Pixie Expanse, it's back, baby. Uh, it's Succession, season finale. Y yeah, Succession 2. I was going to not do things. I was going to not do picks. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, oh, we cool. did them quick. Uh, we did them quick, though, yeah. Uh, all right, well, for... Brian, Justin, Andrew, and myself, that's been after. Boo, 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 boo. Advance session. Uh, Alrighty, well, uh, that's going to do it. Which one of you said the expanse, Justin? Me. Alrighty. Is it the final season? Yeah. Wow. Is it, yeah, is it worthy season. all the way to the end? Uh, I don't know. There's, uh, there's only the first episode of the last season out, but it was still the expanse. And they're in space. Well, there you go. They're doing it in space they're again, in space, folks. Space and everybody's mad, and they're like, "I'm on, I'm on a ship. I talk weird because I'm in another kind of place. Get out of here! Uh, is there too much gravity uh, or not enough of it? I don't know. I'm in the expanse. That's space. Cool. Uh, well, we will be back in a couple hours with Cord Killers with special guest Andrew Maine on the show. <laughs> so that'd be fun. Uh, very cool. Uh, Justin R. Young at Schwed. Yeah. Everybody. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.